Hi, I've put the adding and subtracting fractions all in the same um, um, video because you're going to use it about the same way. You have to have a common denominator in order to add or subtract. We're going to throw some mixed numbers in there, so I'm going to have it. It might be a little, a little bit lengthy, but just bear with me. Adding and subtracting fractions, you have to know that 4 is going to be your numerator. This bar right here is going to be your fraction bar. It can also mean divided by, and then the numerator, the denominator is going to be 9. Your least common denominator is what you're looking for when you're adding and subtracting fractions. The smallest common multiple of the two or more denominators is what we're looking for. So we've talked about multiples, we've talked about the least common multiple, and that's basically what we're looking for. When we're reducing, we're looking for the GCF of the two numbers. When we are trying to find common denominators, we're looking for their LCM. A couple things you need to know. To add a fraction with like denominators, you're going to add the numerators and keep the denominator. Then you're going to, to add fractions with unlike denominators, you're going to have to find a common denominator. You always want to simplify or reduce your answer, always. And even if you reduce it once and you can see it can be simplified again, you probably want to go back and try to, to simplify it again. That happens when we work with larger numbers. Let's do a couple of these. If I am looking at 3 eighths plus 3 eighths, I know that I have a common denominator of 8, so I'm going to keep it as 8. All right, and all I have to do is just add my numerators, which is 3 plus 3 is going to give me 6. The only difference is I do see here that I can reduce down because I know that the greatest common factor between 6 and 8 is 2. So I'm going, to re I'm going to reduce it down by dividing 2 into each, the numerator and the denominator. And two divided by, 6 divided by 2 is going to give me 3, and 8 divided by 2 is going to give me 4, and 3 fourths is in its simplest term. Now, I've got the next one, number 2. I've got two fractions, but they do not have the same common denominator. So I have to find the least common multiple of 8 and 4. And I happen to know that that would be 8. So I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to write 8 down here, 8 down here, and a plus. I don't have to change 3 eighths because it already has the same denominator I want. So I'm going to keep 3 eighths. I know that 4 goes into 8 two times, so then I'm going to say 2 times 1 is what? 2. So all I did with 1 fourth is I just renamed it. Did not change its value. I just renamed it where 8 was in the denominator. And I know that now I can add the numerators because 8 is my denominator, and I know that 3 plus 2 is going to give me 5. Of course, I know that there's nothing other than 1 that can be divided into 5 and 8, so it's already in its simplest of terms. Now I've got two mixed numbers that I have to add. We're not going to do anything different. We're just going to come over here and write a 3. I know that 8 and 4 is just like this one up here. <clears throat> 8 is going to be my common denominator. So I'm going to come over here and put an 8. All right, we're going to add 2, and because 8 is my common denominator, I'm going to leave that as 1 eighth. The only thing I have to change is say, how many times will 2 go into 8? I know it goes in 2 times, and 2 times um, 3 is the same thing as saying 3 fourths times 2 times 2. Remember, we want to do the same thing to both, so this is going to be equal to 6 over 8. So I'm going to put 6 eighths here. Same thing as 3 fourths. I've just renamed it, so now I've got common denominators, and I can add them together. So I'm going to first start with my whole numbers and add 3 plus 2, and I know that's 5. And I'm going to say 8 is my common denominator. Go ahead and write it down. And 6 plus 1 is going to give me 7. And I know I can't reduce down 7 eighths any more than it's already been reduced down, so we have got exactly what our number should be in simplest of terms. All right, this is where it's going to get a little sticky and it's where we're going to start doing uh, subtracting fractions. First thing we need to know is renaming a fraction. When you change the way a fraction appears, 
without changing its value so that you can easily subtract it, just like we just changed a while ago. We changed the fraction so we could easily um, add them together. It's the same way with fractions. Borrowing, you have to borrow in subtracting whole numbers, and we're gonna be talking about borrowing is when you change a whole number into a fraction so that you can subtract so you can subtract it. For example, if I have three and one third, just to show you an example of how I can rewrite three and one third, if three is gonna be the common denominator, I can rewrite three as two and three thirds because three thirds is one and one plus two is gonna give me three. So all I've done is rewritten it so I can now add the one third to it because I've already got a one third on there and I can't just drop it. So I'm gonna take the three, which is renamed now to two and three thirds. And because I've got like denominators, I can now call it two, take my whole number two, Three is gonna be my common denominator and just add three plus one, which is going to be four. And I'm gonna leave it in this improper form here, this fraction, because if I'm going to subtract it, that means that I'm probably gonna take something that is going to be bigger than three or it's gonna be some sort of figure where I, can, I need to use that. Just like seven, if I had the common denominator of four, if four is gonna be my common denominator, I can always say, let's change seven, which is a whole number seven by itself, into six, I've taken one of the whole numbers and written it as four fourths, which is the same thing as one. So six and four fourths is the same thing as seven. And I'll show you how we're gonna do this when we go to subtract. All right, let's look over here at the subtraction problems. I have nine minus two and two fifths. Well, if I just had nine minus two, I could do that. That's just gonna be seven, that's simple math. So I'm gonna sit there and I'm gonna, let me get the glare out of there, there you go. So I'm gonna rename this nine as nine and because five is my, gonna be my denominator, I'm gonna rewrite it as eight and five fifths, okay? Haven't changed the value, it's still nine because eight and five fifths is still gonna be nine, minus two and two fifths, okay? So now I'm going to subtract the whole numbers. I know eight minus two is gonna give me six. Five is my common denominator, I'm gonna write it over here, and then I'm just gonna come over here and say five minus two, and five minus two is three. So my answer in reduced terms in simplest form is six and three fifths. Here I've got a two mixed numbers, and thank goodness they have the same common denominator. But look at this, can I subtract three from one? No, so I've got to rename this four as a, um, I'm gonna rewrite this four as, because four is my common denominator, I'm gonna rewrite it as three and four fourths, okay? And don't forget, I've got to add that one-fourth that was with the four, okay? I can't leave that alone. So now I'm going to say minus two and three-fourths, and we're gonna clean it up a little bit so it's easier to work with. If I've got three and four-fourths plus one-fourth, that's gonna be the same thing as three, keep my common denominator, and four plus one is gonna be five, okay? So now I've just renamed it. I've borrowed something and I've renamed it and I'm gonna say minus two and three fourths. And I know that three minus two is one, and I know that my common denominator is four, and five minus three is gonna be two. Well, guess what? I can't rename one, but I know that the common denominator, or the greatest common factor of two and four is two. So I'm gonna take two and divide it into both of these, so divide both by two, and I know this will leave me with one half. So it's gonna be one and one half, okay? Here I've got six and five ninths minus two and seven ninths. Well, I know that five minus seven, that's not gonna work, so I have to borrow from the six. So I'm gonna come over here and that's gonna leave me with a whole number five. Remember, five and nine ninths is the same thing as six. But I also have, I've got to add to it this five ninths that was sitting with the whole number six over here. Minus two and seven ninths. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rename this as five and just simplify it out. Nine is my common denominator and I know that nine plus five is gonna give me 14. So 14 ninths is the improper fraction. Minus two and seven ninths. Go with your whole numbers first. Five minus two is gonna give you three. 
and I know my common denominator is 9, and I know that 14 minus 7 is 7, and I know that there's no other factor in 7 and 9 that can reduce it down except for 1, so 3 and 7 ninths is going to be my new answer. Here I've got 15 and 2 ninths minus 7 and 5 6. You're probably thinking, uh-oh, it doesn't have common denominators. You're right. So what we need to do is I need to find out what is my least common multiple of 9 and 6. And I'm hoping by now you've already figured it out. It's going to be 18. So we're going to come over here, and I'm going to rename this as, and I'm just going to write it down here, because I'm going to say 18. What did I do to 9 to get 18? I had to multiply this by 2, and I have to multiply this by 2. So whatever I do to 1, I've got to do to the other. So I'm going to say, hang on just a minute, that's not what we do. We're going to do 18, two, 18 goes, 9 goes into 18 two times, and 2 times 2 is going to be 4. So I'm multiplying both by 2. Here, what have I got to multiply 6 by to get 18? So I'm going to say, okay, 7 minus 7, and I know this common denominator is going to be 18, so 6 goes into 18 three times, and 3 times, so I've got to multiply these by 3. So what is 3 times 5? 3 times 6 is 18, so 3 times 5 is going to be 15. Well, if I look at this, I know I still cannot take 15 from 4. So I have to borrow from the whole number 15, which is going to leave me with 14. And remember, we're just renaming that whole number as 18 eighteenths because we've already figured out that 18 is going to be my common denominator. And I've got to add to it this 4 eighteenths that's over here already with it. I can't leave that alone. Minus 7 and 15 eighteenths. Let's clean this up right here together. And I'm going to say 14. 18 is my common denominator. What is 18 plus 4? It's going to be 22. Minus 7 over 15, I mean 7 and 15 eighteenths. Well, I've got the same common denominator. I've got 14 and 7. I do know that I can take 15 from 22, so I'm good to go. So I'm going to say 14 minus 7 is 7. I know that 22 minus 15 is also going to give me 7, and my common denominator is 18, so I'm going to keep the 18. 7 eighteenths cannot be reduced, so it's going to be 7 and 7 eighteenths. Hope you learned something. We're going to be doing some of these problems tomorrow. Um, I know it's a lot to it, but you can do it.